You know, over the next five years uh, in, in Rishiri, we're going to see some incredible things. We are going to have the grand opening of Rashiri Community Secondary Christian School. And uh, we've, we've, we've been building this building there. We're so excited. I think we have a picture of it. I want you all to see this. It's kind of the latest and greatest. Uh, they're working on painting it right now. Chalkboards have been hung. They're so excited. There is a waiting list for this place. It is going to make a difference. Secondary school is like our middle and high school. It's going to represent a future without poverty for children. That is the difference, yeah. And it's going to really um, educate Christian leaders that this school is going to produce that will carry on the mantle of community development uh, for the future. So in partnership with Africa Renewal Ministries and things you'll see in the next five years from us, uh, we will start a sponsorship program for students attending this school. We're going to start a, a teacher sponsorship program as well. There will be continued church planting. And we believe that God is up to something new in Uganda and moving us to uh, also an, uh, to take on another community, very specifically in the village of Bukamero in central Uganda. So be praying with us about that, about launching a second initiative in Uganda. As my Ugandan friends would say, hallelujah. We're excited. Well, now it's 2011. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, we did all that work before we started this, the, the, the nonprofit. And so the first two initiatives, North Richmond and Uganda, became this foundation of the birth of the nonprofit that we all know as Attack Poverty, committed to breaking the cycle of generational poverty and doing that through holistic community development in Jesus' name. We had this thought. What if we resisted spotlighting vulnerabilities and instead we reveled in the natural God-given capacities and assets that were in these places formerly known as unfit communities? What if we flipped it a little bit? We knew it would demand recognizing the image of God in others and exposing the blinding lies that poverty loves to tell. What if we focused on listening instead of telling? And what if instead of showing up amongst the poor and just handing stuff out, we built relationships and we extended an empowering hand up? So we set out to put the margins at the center of our concern. And we dared to cultivate hope amid cynicism in forgotten places. Humbly recognizing our own poverty, admitting we don't have it all together and not waiting until we did. We begin to show up. And listen, sitting, standing, and walking with the poor, generously stewarding privilege for others. We saw these pockets of poverty not as places to flee, but places to invest. And we really wanted to step in the center of God's kingdom becoming reality on earth. Tack poverty made its home at the center and the corner of faith and action. Really of proclamation and declaration. And we thrive on seeing people empowered and living into all God created them to be. It's development. It's not relief. And we're knowing that God is the one who transforms people in places. We're simply the catalyst. But you got to show up. And so attack poverty is doing that. We believe we're changing the way the church and the world approaches poverty. And we're cultivating spaces where this transformation can happen. So we couldn't be more excited. We receive our 501c3 status. We get to work. It's 2013. And we take our lessons learned. And we partner with the fellowship in Katy, and we launched our third friends initiative. Fellowship came to us and said, look, you know, we've adopted a community overseas, but we, we really believe we should be doing this locally. But we're here in Cinco Ranch. Could you help us? And so we began this journey of discovery together, and we learned that within five to six miles of the fellowship church was the community of Sundown, a multi-ethnic, working poor neighborhood with a Title I school right there in the center and we started with multiple community listening tours, and, and, and we heard a deep desire, you're not going to believe it, for an after-school program. And uh, so we launched You Can Academy in a community mud building across the street from the school. And we then began to serve families through home repair. And we mobilized volunteers to serve teachers and providing in-school student support and, and mentoring. And Mr. P, the principal, turned out to be a person of peace in this community. He got behind the vision. He actually encourages his parents and children to participate in UCAN Academy, as well as Mission Week there in Sundown. And after seeing the results we were getting from our first years of UCAN Academy there, he has now granted us access to his school. 
UCAN Academy is now inside Sundown Elementary. Or excuse me, yeah, Sundown Elementary. And uh, we have an amazing partnership there. We've raised over $30,000 for that school, resurrecting a carnival that was dormant for 19 years. Yeah. <clears throat> This year, we held our third annual Mission Week, and we opened a second UCAN Academy in a HUD housing complex in the community, bringing our total to five UCAN Academy locations across all of our initiatives. Many great things are happening there, but I want you to listen to this story of transformation in Sundown. 